Well, hello, hello, and welcome back. No need to wait for the counter to finish. I'm here. I'm ready. And so are you. Uh, okay, so let me refresh the comments here so we get those back up. I, I, was, I was supposed to be in a meeting, but I forgot what the time was, and I went to check my calendar, and then it was then. And so, so here we are. Anyway. <sighs> Let's see. So where were we? We were at this point where... The deploy was working well. I had turned on jumbo packets on my local machine because I did this the other day. And I said the other day, I said, if I have any network issues, strange, unexpected network issues, remind me to turn off the jumbo packets. And as soon as I saw that I was having a strange network issue, I went and turned off jumbo packets. So this is tangential, completely tangential. But for those of you that don't know, in the world of gigabit internet, it would be reasonable to assume that we don't need to limit ourselves to the old dial-up standard of 1.5 kilobytes per, uh, approximately, per TCP packet. In the world of gigabit broadband, we should be able to send more reasonably sized packets, and the internet should work better, right? But, of course, it doesn't. So, um, yeah. So this is this is where you can you can go to change your setting and to have jumbo packets and if you use jumbo packets and you have gigabit ethernet and gigabit internet and all that ostensibly it should uh, make your connection faster and more reliable but in practice it does not and we just stick to the old one and a half um, uh, kilo, uh, kilobyte anyway so here we are. Uh, this, the, the, the deploy process ran the whole way through and let me see, I'm going to check in this other screen here and get status. Okay. What needs to change here? Uh, I added a function that will add dependencies if they're not there. And I changed from uh, source to bash, just exporting some stuff, and I changed exit status from zero to, or from one to zero because it was actually, I was setting it, I always set exit status to one whenever I'm debugging something, but then sometimes I forget to change it back to indicate, hey, that's not really an error. Anyway, um, I'm going to push the... system slash env stuff that's what i'm gonna call it f for fix up because i i uh roll up those commits or squash them as as some like to say i don't i don't think squash is really an appropriate word it's really you're rolling them up you're rolling the commits up um squashing makes it sound different than what it is you roll all the commits up into a single commit anyway uh, but I should use the standard terminology when I'm talking about this stuff. Uh, so in theory, now, I should be able to go to, I think this was dev xyz. But I saw that there was some something that failed here. And I don't know what the best way to go about this is going to be. Um, let's see here. Mm, where, where did it get to the point that's actually deploying the application? It got to the point that it's deploying the application. Hmm. Okay, is this, what is this? That's not the right place to be. Okay. Okay, this is where it's got the client. Okay, this, this is the problem that I'm worried about right here. There's two things that I'm worried about this. One, for some reason, this didn't cause a failure. This, this should have caused a failure. This is an error. It's a hard error. It, it, uh, yeah, that, that should be a failure. So I need to first go find out why. And I, I have a suspicion that it's probably because I, the way that I was running the script. But let's see. We got, oh, excuse me. NPM notice. Anytime you run bash, all of the the settings are reset essentially okay let me let me go over here we're going to check and see what branch i was deploying to or what 
Okay, dev ABC, that's what I was deploying to. So I should, in theory, be able to go to dev ABC, and this should take us to, oh good, I get the login page, excellent. Ah, but the back end is broken in some way, most likely. Let's see what we get here. I'm going to click next and we're gonna see what. All right, 502, that's bad gateway, which means the back end didn't start. And I think that the reason the back end didn't start is because that error message looked like it was related to uh, SQL being wrong. So let's go log in and find out why it didn't start. I'm gonna go get out of this one and I'm gonna SSH dev ABC. Okay, and let's take a look. By the way, for those of you joining in, hello. Uh, what, perhaps welcome back if you were on here about half an hour ago when I had to exit suddenly. Okay, so what is going on? I think we're seeing something that is expected. At first I didn't realize why it was expected, but now I know. So the thing that we're seeing that's unexpected is that the service was never started. So we have here all the files, but the service was never started. And the reason the service was never started is because, uh, let's see, SQL seed, This one should have run, no, the scripts. So SQL load, load, let's see, load enums. That should run. Mm, that doesn't run. Let's try going in one directory. I need to source the env from up above, and then I need to run SQL load enums. Hmm should not be asking me to enter in a password. So something's not working out quite right. So I don't know what to make of that. I need to go check, I need to go check over on the other window what's going on. So I'm gonna look at my .env here where I've got potentially some secrets Okay, my DB URL looks right. So I'm not sure. Hmm. Oh, I think I know what it is. Okay, so I need to make sure that I export DB URL before the SQL stuff is run. So let me go down to where is SQL, SQL seed. All right, that's where the SQL seed is. But where am I actually running that? Is it in the scripts? It is in the scripts. So let's look. I kind of want to rename this to REST API rather than just API so it's a little bit more clear. Okay. So after this and before this is run, well, no, this is run in the same environment. So that shouldn't matter. But if we wanted to run it not in the same environment, all I need to do is export DB URL. But this is sourced, so shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, so back over, where was it? Over here. Excuse me. Hey! <laughs> Bless me, indeed. 
Um, so I'm going to source dot 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 env, and I'm going to export db url, and then I'm going to run this script. And that, good, that runs without incident. This is the one that's failing, I think. Yeah. Hmm. So I'm, it's interesting. I, I don't think the exit status of that changed. Yeah, the exit status was, was zero, but it should have been one. That's kind of weird. Let me check in here. Scripts, SQL, load, logic. Mmm, set dash e, set dash u. Let's try that. See what happens this time. Good. Good, 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 good. Okay, so I need to update that. Back over here. So let's go into... Eh, I'm not going to worry about it right now. So that did fail. And that did stop things, but for some reason it kept going after that. So that's that's like what I got to figure out next. Zero, whoops, zero four API. Okay, so what what happened here? This should have stopped. I don't know if the the error code propagated up. Because SSH didn't exit. Hmm. Okay, so this this kind of worked as expected. Um, I need to figure out why the databases are out of sync. Uh, I have a thought on that. Ooh. I think simply right now there's different things deployed to staging that are deployed to development. And so I am running I am running a new development instance on the staging copy of the data. Okay, I'm going to message somebody real quick. Uh Uh, seed copy of the SQL data doesn't match the schema of the dev branch code. I need to create separate branches for the SQL seed data and load dev from dev and staging from staging. Okay, I'll go do that real quick then. This is going to be okay. So what I'm going to do is we're going to, we're going to get out of here. In fact, I'm just going to destroy, I'm just going to delete it should, yeah, it's going to delete AJ0, and then we're going to see in a little bit it's going to delete dev ABC. Yep, there we go, and now it's done. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to update this, and I need to get this into the repository at some point too. So what I need is echo, let's do printf, printf, checking for percent %s, and then this should be my domain prefix. And then we put a dot, dot, dot. And then we don't have a new line there. Oh, you know what? We could just do AJ hyphen. That would be sufficient, wouldn't it? Then we don't have to run it so many times. All right. 
checking for deployments with prefix whatever. Oh, whoops. There we are. And then, so that's going to grab that. And we're going to delete the, both the DNS records and the instances. Okay, so we're echo uh, deleting all droplets with tag. And again, printf here would be better. So we're going to use printf and my delete tag. I'm just going to call it my tag. That's what I'm going to call it. And then new line so that it prints out that. And then we're going to change this to be my tag and we're going to set my tag up above. So my tag my tag equals delete me we could put this up here too my domain prefixes cool so let me just run this again oh hmm So actually what I do want, I don't want to put that there. I want to put that here. And then we could just use printf here. There we are. Cool. So. And then at the end, I should print out a new line. Okay, let me bring the comments back up here. Oh, whoops. All right, that looks good. Except for one thing. I actually want the dot, dot, dot to go there. Whatever, no biggie. And personal preference, I do like to start out with a new line and end with an extra new line. Perfect. All right, I like that. So we're gonna go with that, and then I need to I need to go into the dev instance. I need to rethink the whole bit about the SQL tools. Okay, so here let's let's go. I, this is our that machine's already deleted. So let's just get rid of that. Uh, let's see what I can get rid of here. I don't need to have this API up right now. I do need to go through a pull request for that sometime later. Uh, the SSH stuff I've already done, the counter stuff I've already done, all this stuff I've already done. So I'm just gonna leave that up to remind me that I need to go fix something in that later. Uh, DigitalOcean API I don't need up right now. We'll bring that back up when we need it again. Um, I don't need to worry about that or that or that or that. Okay, so we're back down to just what we need pretty much. So the next piece, what did I say it was? I need to, do I have the SQL seed here? I do. Okay, so I need to go to the SQL seed here. And I need to check out dash B staging is what I need to do. 
Uh, branch chain staging already exists. Hmm, so this is not what I thought it was. Uh, I'm not in the SQL seed that I want to be in. That's okay. I'm going to go into SQL seed. Oh, I don't have SQL seed here. It's fine. We'll just clone it. SQL seed. Okay, so I need to get checkout dash B staging, and we need to do git push u origin staging. This is going to be a little bit difficult. I don't know what main should be, but I'm going to do checkout development. And here we're going to have what's actually in development. So I'm going to take this, this whole directory, and I'm going to move it to the dev server, SQL seed. Okay. And then I'm going to log into the dev server. And then I'm going to go into SQL seed. And I'm going to copy... Oh, hey again, Yarun. What's up? Oh, gosh. What is it? We're going to standardize all these names at some point. Okay. So I'm going to run SQL dump. I'll show you what the script is in just a second. So we're going to run dump enums. I don't really need to run dump enums. That's It's the same thing. It's okay. I'm going to run it anyway. So we're going to run dump enums, and then we're going to run SQL dump logic. And then I can show you what these scripts are. SQL dump enums. It's just using MySQL dump and then giving it... Um, I don't need to create the tables, no create info, because I have in the code, there's the logic to create the database. And we don't want that to be out of sync anyway. Skip extended insert. Uh, this makes it so it's one insert per line, which just makes it more readable. It's a little slower, but it's more readable. And then insert ignore means if you're trying to ignore the same thing twice, don't worry about it. That's what, so it's just dumping all these tables and those are basically our enum tables. And then similarly with our logic, the logic tables, there's some stuff that is company specific. So if we do the white labeling, we're going to have to figure this out a little bit better because there's going to be some, uh, some stuff that would go in here for, for some companies, but not for others. It gets a little bit messy if we end up doing white label deployments, but we might end up doing that. And I'm going to uh, check on the comments in just a second. Um, let's see what this looks like. Oh, really? The enums were modified? That doesn't make sense. Hmm. Oh, it's just saying where it came from is modified. Hmm. Okay. I think... Okay, I might need, first, I might need to go back into the staging environment. Hold on, I'm going to open up a different window. I'm going to go back into a staging environment, and I'm going to re-export from the staging environment. And I'm first going to update that. I need to have a way that I can pretty easily do this in a more automated fashion so I don't have to go manually update. I should be able to just run one script and have the repository get updated with the new data. Okay. Hmm. I'm trying to think about this. How would I script this? Hmm. Let me see. Okay, taking a look at the comments here. Uh, 
I tried to fix the plugin to GLPI. What is GLPI? And I think it should uh, be better to watch you. Oh, okay. I woke up around 16 hours ago, so I will leave it to tomorrow. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If you've if it if you haven't got the right sleep and you're trying to fix a plugin for something, yeah, it's often my, very very often it's just better to sleep on it and come back to it the next day. I agree there 100%. After all, there are problems even Mountain Dew can't solve. Okay. GitHub. Server. I'm just copying some stuff over here. Don't mind me. Oh, that's really slow. Why is this going so slow? Hmm, that's not what I wanted. I was in the wrong directory. I was copying the wrong thing. Okay. Going over here. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Um, right, we're going we're gonna to see if we can do something here. This is going to be interesting. We're going to see if we can SSH savvy status and then SSH staging one and then let's see we're going to source um, savvy staging one dot env and then we're going to go into the SQL seed directory and then we're going to source script scripts and then um let's see sql dump logic and then i guess i guess we'll be done with that and then we'll do our sync staging one sql seed to sql seed and then we'll close that off let's see if this works hmm I know why that is. I will go fix that real quick. I haven't heard of uh, GLPI before. IT asset management tool. So you'll have to forgive me because lots of people throughout the week you know, come in the stream and leave the stream, etc. And so I don't always remember all the details that I gather when I'm asking you questions. So I'm going to ask again, even though you probably just answered me a few days ago, because I, I think I remember asking you about this. What, what's the, the primary thing that you do for work? You are a developer for an IT company? Is that what it is? Hmm. All right. Savvy... Staging one, and then what? Um, dot env. Okay. So 
So let's try this again. So we're going to touch .env. Well, that's cool. This worked. So let me let's see update.sh. Do a little double SSH here. A little double SSH never hurt anyone. Somehow, I think this should work. I'm actually not sure if this should work. I think we should be able to do like that. If we're not already in quotes, then we can escape a single quote. Tis my belief. And then we should be able to do... Let's copy... Oh, from here... Pretty much the same thing. There we go. Network and infrastructure engineer, but in my company, they give me what I want. Nice. So I wrote the, uh, wrote in the Ansible for automate creating machines or automate provisioning for network stuff. When I came into the company, it was three years ago, I did not know about network routing, VLAN, et cetera. Cool. They asked me to be a dev, but I said, guys, I know Linux, so I would like to know something new. Uh, that's my story. I help the Linux staff for other teams. Half and half between IT and dev, huh? That's cool. And I see uh, some other people are joining in. Hello to you. Welcome. I'm AJ. Who the heck are you? And what are you doing here? Get out! I don't live stream, so any random hooligan can just join in on the channel. Leave! No, that's not really what I want, although that would be hilarious if you did. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I would love to know what brings you here. I am just working on an deployment. I'm working on a deployment thingy. Okay. I actually should be on staging when I run this. Let's see if this works out. Hmm. Yeah. So here's the question. Why did this one succeed, but this one failed? I think it's because I <clears throat> escaped one too many times. Because I was escaping the strings. Yeah, okay. We'll try, we'll try it again. We'll try it again. Okay. Hmm, that's not what I wanted. I actually wanted this. But I figure out a better way to do that because that's not going to work out 
in the general case. And uh, let's see. I don't really want to diff those. It is sufficient for me to say they have changed. All right, we're gonna do SQL dump enums as well. Mm, this is gonna be annoying. All right, so what's the actual difference with the enums? Demo DB. Huh, that's weird. So basically timestamps and server name is all that's different there. I will be interested to see what's different if we look at this logic. Hmm. Yeah, that's the demo database. <gasps> oh. Okay. I think I know. All right, anyway, I'm just going to add this here. Star dot SQL. What have we got? I'm going to add the update script too. Update to staging. To latest staging. And a feature. Add update tool. Actually, before we do that, let's take the branch name here. Oh, that's not going to work. I'm not going to have to be able to do that. Okay. My wife's driving up. All right, let me see. Let me see what we got over here. Uh, had an interview with another company, but decided to say do uh, did to that I can raise my skill in various things. That's good. That's awesome. Um, Mason, subscribe for the GC modding. Thought I'd pop by. Going for a cloud computing associates right now, but getting GEs out of the way first. Cool. I may understand what you're doing in about a year or two. Yeah, well, you know, you can understand now if you want to. Just ask questions. Let's see. Well, that's, yeah, I, with the people subscribing for the GameCube stuff, I, well, I didn't, I didn't realize that I was going to start doing daily live streams like this at the time. I, well, at the end of the video, the, the GameCube video, I talk about Beyond Code and Software Engineering. I was developing on a YouTube channel and course material for that, but I just haven't had the, the strength of will to really pull it through in the right way. And I do, there are two, there's, there's another GameCube video that I want to do at some point, and I want to do a, a video on modding the original Switch, um, just a soft mod with the little... USB-C dongle, but mm. just haven't gotten around to it because I do, I do have my switch modded. I can plug in the USB-C dongle and, uh, there's my wife. I'm in the garage looking out at the street. I have the blinds open today so I can get some, some sunlight. Hence, the purple in the background is only a faint tint and not glaring because of all the natural light. Okay, so that's good enough. Let me do checkout development, and I'm going to do checkout staging, and I want specifically to get the update.sh file. And then we're going to change the update.sh file, and we're going to grab the dev database. So... We don't actually need to do any of that extra stuff. So we're going to source 
Savvy Dev, go into SQL Seed. Oh, I think I do need to rsync us AVH, AVHP, this repo to Savvy Dev SQL Seed. do this bin bash set dash e set dash u my env equals there we go savvy dev maybe actually hmm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at it this way I am gonna consider just keeping No, I'm not. Oh, she got eggnog. That's good. Wonderful wife, wonderful life. She brings me the eggnog. Her eggnog brings all the husbands to the yard. Well, just this husband, I suppose. Which is for the best. It would be very, very hard <laughs> for one wife to bring all the husbands to the yard. Uh. Make enemies in the neighborhood real quick. Yeah, this is okay. I want this to expand, expand on the client side. This is all right. Maybe I could do this instead and it would not whine about it. Yeah, I forget what the thing to disable that is. I don't know what it's saying there. I'm going to go back. We're just going to do this. Okay. Um, so it's complaining about that. And so I do need to put in here a shell check disable equals SC. And then I don't remember which one this is. Surrounding quotes may actually unquote this. Remove or escape them. Oh, right. I don't want to do that. It is correct. I did not mean to do that. Note that unescape, this is, expands on the client side. So that's the message that I need to check for. Because I... Let's see. Shell check. Enumerated shell check codes. Here I go. Uh, okay, I got a couple of comments to catch up on in just a second. Okay, 2029. I need to just keep that page open. Thankfully, I have a bookmark, so I can get to it quickly. All right, went for an evening walk in the rain with my wife. We talked about analysis paralysis and how much time we lost overthinking about our best tool for the job, but not actually doing the job. Good therapy session. Way to go. I mentioned about uh, our chat. It helped. Huzzah! Okay, yes. Uh, so the question that I have about the EOF of doing the SSH is I should see, let's see, um, SSH, let's see, quote, 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 quote. Let's see, EOF. EOF. Quote EOF to make the document expansion happen on the server side rather than on the client. So that's the part that I'm a little bit confused about. So if I were to do this and then do this, This is saying, this is what I want. This is what I want. 
I do want it to expand on the client side. I don't want it to expand. So this is 2087. Okay, so it's fine to do the EOF here. I think that makes it a little more readable. But I do want to, it to expand um, here. Well, I guess I don't necessarily, whatever. It just so happens that the server name and the file name are the same. That's not necessarily always the case. Well, I would like it to be always the case. So we're gonna, we're gonna leave it there for the time being. Okay, so this is correct. So if I run this, then I should get the correct dev dump. Sure. Update development SQL C dump. And then be feature add updater script. So now main is meaningless, which is fine. And this always needs to be checked out by its branch. And then we're good. Brave browser in the house. Yeah, that's right. I So on JavaScript Jabber, we talked with Samson about Brave. Samson is one of the, I, I, I think he's the lead evangelist, the community evangelist person. I think they, they don't use the term evangelist anymore. Advocate. Now it's the term advocate, right? Because evangelist... It's too uncool because it's too close to religious ties and heaven forbid that we have any ties to religion and decency. No, we don't, we don't want that. We want to be independent and free from all those things. Of course. Anyway, I think that the, I, I don't know if they call him evangelist or advocate, but I know in the, in the broader community, it seems that people are moving over towards advocate rather than evangelist, but evangelist is more true because oftentimes these technology things are cults. So they are religious. Anyway, that all aside, uh, yeah, I, 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 I kind of bashed him, uh, at, at the time that we were talking with him saying brave seems like a bunch of junk and I don't know why anybody would want it. And yet here I am now using it. So I have, I have repented of my evil ways and come to the light and knowledge and truth. Um, let's see. And, uh, oh, oh, you want the, the shell check? She, this is actually referenced in their documentation. It's also referenced on webinstall.dev shell check. So I'm going to give you both. I'm going to give you this. This is shell check cheat sheet. And then this, this is linked. So if you go down here um, somewhere, complete list of SCXX error codes. But you know what? I want, I'm going to open up an issue on Webby for this. Let's see, github.com slash. And I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to call this cheat sheet update shell check. And there's, there's just a number of error codes that I just keep coming to over and over and over and over again for disabling, for the purpose of disabling. And so I am going to copy some of them over. So the one that we just saw about EOF, and what was the other one? SC 2029, I think it was. No, I guess it wasn't. 2209, maybe? Um, well, I guess I can find out what it is again real quick. I can just go in here and I can change this to quotes. 
and then it will whine at me again. Whoops, except, oh no, that's not what I want to do. Ah, what have I done? Okay, so this one is unescaped this. this exp it was 2029. Add the most common error codes that I disable to the cheat sheet. Okay, so I know that there's those two, and there's, um, sometimes I use this one. I, sh I guess what I should do is put in all caps if I'm going to, if a variable is going to be used in other places, I should have, I should have all caps on it. Um... It's hard for me to remember off the top of my head. But I'm I'm just gonna start it there. I should I should go through and see where I have shell check disable equals. Let's do this. Shell check disable equals. Let's look for that in all right, 2087, 2034. Wait, 2087 is the one that I just did, right? 2087? Yeah. What was 2034? Yeah, okay. Where's another place where I have a bunch of these? If I go to projects, root, and then webby maybe? Twenty thirty four, twenty thirty four, twenty thirty four. It looks like twenty thirty four is by far my most common. And then I'm going to go onto my dev box real quick and run the same query. Twenty thirty four, twenty thirty four. Whoops. Okay, there we go. Now we're getting some good ones. Uh, what is 2016? 216. Yep, that's one that I'll use pretty often. Let's see. What was 1004? That must be one that I use often. 1004. Yep. Because I'm often doing a bunch of subscripting, and that's what these are particular. Almost all of these are related to subscripting. Scripts within a script. Nice, nice. I'm an unpaid evangelist myself. I'm going to be on the web all day for my work. Might as well make a little bat while at it. So, what, what, uh, what evangelist are are you? Are you are you a brave evangelist, or what? What do what what uh, are you an evangelist for? Oh, oh, that's nice. That's I. Um... I'm going to copy that. Let me go check out what all of these are. 
Pum, 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 pum. So do you just put that at the top of the file and then it disables all of those for the entire file? I typically don't disable for the entire file because, let's see, 2207. Prefer map file or read to, to split command output or quote to avoid splitting. That's not what I'd use. 2053, let me check that one out. 2053, quote, the RHS event. I don't even know what this is. I, don't, I have no idea what that means. So your, your bash foo surpasses mine, it would seem. All right, 1083. Okay. Okay, that's also, that's not something that I use. 1091. Not following. Error message here. Oh, oh, this is about the, uh, for source. Yeah, I, I have trouble with that sometimes. I'm going to put that one in there. Um, for source.env, etc. That's what that one's for. Okay, 91 and then 2129. That one sounds familiar, but maybe that's just because I was at 20. Oh, yeah, this one. I get this one sometimes. Um, but I'm not really clear on what... Oh, oh, I think I see what it, what it's saying. Yeah, I think that's one of the ones that I need to use sometimes too. The 2129. All right, and then there was, let me go check here. There was a few more. Uh, 2088, that's in there a bunch of times. Um, let me go check 2088. 2088 tilde does not expand in quotes. Yep. Again, subscripting. Um, and what else? So we got 2001, 2120. I'm actually going to pull this over to the other screen so I can quickly reference it without going back and forth. And I'm also going to pull this one over to the other screen so I can quickly update it without going back and forth. So first, let's see, what's 2001? Hmm. Come on. There we go. Uh, see if you can use search replace instead. Oh, it doesn't like my use of said. Yeah. I'm always going to prefer said to bash replacements because I don't want to learn 100 tools. I want to learn as few tools as possible to get the job done and said is more powerful than bash therefore said trumps bash okay um it's crazy that it even goes down to that level though okay 21 20 21 20 foo references arguments but none are ever passed i don't know why i would use that um so i'm, I'm going to ignore that one for now and then 20, we had 2034 was the most common one. 2086, what is that one? Double quote to prevent globbing and word spreading. That one I rarely ever, there are, yeah, with subscripting, sometimes I want it to actually unglob or to do the word splitting is what I think I mean to say. So that one I'm going to put in here. Rarely, but occasionally I do want that. And then 2119. I don't remember why I used that. So I'm going to ignore it. So I got 2072. Oh, yeah, if you want to compare version numbers, but the, you're really trying to compare strings. That's where that's been useful for me. So let's go back to 2072, and I'll check comments here in just a second. I think one might have come in while I was going through this. And 2086, 2072, 2016. Let's try 2016. What do we got? 
And I think I already had this one in here. Yeah, I already did. Okay, cool. So I'm going to update that issue. All right, now let me let me go um, check out here. When I create bash scripts, I try to have multiple files. Yeah, I typically do have multiple files. Um, but it depends. I create the function of getting the error message, uh, etc. Create the function. I'm not quite sure what you mean there. And it comes to me today. Okay. I'm Evangelist for Brave. I'm on a mission to convert all my Chrome colleagues to Brave Browser. Yeah. I actually want to require uh, Chrome at work because we work in the legal space. And uh, I think that Brave is a safer browser. So why not have all the cool features of Chrome? The added privacy as well is getting paid in... I'm not going to say that. It would be cryptocurrency. Crypto refers to cryptography. Crypto has been crypto long before there was ever any such thing as a cryptocurrency. Crypto is crypto. Cryptocurrency is not crypto. Ugh. But, alas, this is cultural appropriation at its finest. There's a word that exists that means a thing, and people who are not part of the group come in and steal the word, and then convince everyone else in the world that that's what the word means. So now we have to say cryptography out long every time we say it. Um, it is true with SC2001. Let me see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, about the... Might as well use a better tool. Yeah, I am I am very much a fan of don't learn every tool and don't learn every feature of every tool. Learn the fewest tools that you can and prefer the best ones um, to the not as good ones. There are a couple places where maybe I disobey that myself, but um, do as I say, not as I do. All right, so now let's get back to this. Now that I'm done looking up shell check error codes. I I have not had lunch. I would love lunch. What would you like for lunch? Hmm, lasagna. Lasagna, okay. Thank you. Oh, what is it, sweetie? It's a marshmallow. Oh, it's a marshmallow. Do you want me to eat it? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna eat it. Um mm. Thank you, sweetie. I love you, little girl. But secret, I don't love marshmallows. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see, use EOF expansion rather than quote. There we go. Now I need to go update my deploy script. And the deploy script needs to reference the specific branch of this that it's working with. Hmm. That's okay. So let's bring that back over here. And let me take a look at SQL seed. Hmm. I wonder why RG is ignoring the git deploy directory. It probably ignores all directories that start with .git. And I might want to make an issue about that. Because I'm pretty sure dot get deploy is not in my um, 
my git ignore. Anyway, this is the script to edit, SQL seed. And we do need to check out a branch for this. All right, and this is build, and build does give us environment, and environment should be development or production or staging. So this should work out actually as expected. So that should be good. <coughs> and I'm just going to go double check on this. <sighs> so demo. Hmm. So what is demo though? I'm going to think about that one. It really Build the demo. Let me go up to here. So when we use my env, where are we using it? Demo. Okay. Yeah, so demo should be production. It should be exactly the same as production, right? No, it's not. Beta is exactly the same as production. Demo has a different database. But demo, okay, as far as ENVs go, Demo should be different, but as far as the code and the database, demo should be identical. So I'll have to reconcile that at some point in the not far off future. Some of these things at this point ought to just be declared up top. And then when we run in an environment, we ought to set them and then start off the chain rather than reduplicating this. Well, it's not reduplicating. It's just duplicating. Reduplication is its own specific thing, which is when you use a word twice in order to better convey its meaning. So it's broke, but it's not broke, broke or it's fancy, but it's not fancy, fancy. Or this is really, really good. That sort of thing. That's reduplication. It's one of my favorite words. It would definitely go in my top 100 favorite words. All right. Um, so have I got that adequately pushed? Where was this? Okay. Get push dash u origin development. Cool. And then I've got staging. And then I'm going to check out dash b demo. And really... Rather than having separate branches on this, I probably ought to have separate folders for this. That's probably what I should be doing here. But for right now, since I'm down this path, I'm gonna just keep on this path. So this should work if we did demo, demo one, uh, let's see, EOF one. EOF1, because then we can do EOF2. See? EOF2. That won't get confusing. Of course it won't. And then I guess we should have to pull that all the way out like this. I wish that this would work not just with tabs, but with whatever the leading space is. It would just get rid of all of the leading space. That would make more sense. Not meaning whatever it first encounters as leading space, it should realize that everything below that is is going to be leading space as well. So maybe I'll just go back for this one. 
to leave it this way. And that will be fine anyway. And then we can call this EOF instead of EOF1. Um, but this is going to be one of those things where, again, it needs my service demo one. Oops. And then where'd my little quote EOF thing go? Client side. Twenty eighty seven. There we are again. Shell check disable equals twenty eighty seven. There we go. All right, let's see if this will work. Hmm. It did not. Interesting. I have to go check that out real quick. Well, that's weird. I don't see it. Oh. It's just not up to date. That's all. There we go. Hmm. Interesting. Really? Let's try that instead. Huh. I have a hard time believing that there was no difference between... Oh, I guess not. I think demo and staging are on the same. They just run separate databases, but in this case the databases are the same because staging and production and demo are probably already in sync. Okay, we'll go with it. Update script. Danke. Gourmet meal. Thank you so much, honey. Mm. Look, fancy potato chips. Mm, oh, good. Mm, I want more of these. Okay. Alright, let's take a look here. Manual deploy, and let's do DEF. But before I run this, I'm going to switch over here, and I'm going to run, whoops, not over here. Not over here either. Over somewhere. There's a place. Oh, yeah. This place. Let me bring this back over. So I'm going to run my delete all the droplets. So, Yorun, if you were still around, you, was it you that were telling me that you use Ansible 
Was that was that was that up here in the chat earlier? I think you said you were. Yeah. So tell me if you didn't care whether it's Ubuntu, or if if you could just pick one Linux and be done with it. Do you still think that Ansible is really valuable? Because my understanding is that Ansible and a lot of these, they're supposed to be, they're, they're, uh, they abstract so you can use any of the different Linux systems. And I just don't know if that's actually really that valuable. What's, what's the greatest value that you get out of Ansible, assuming that you are only ever going to use Ubuntu? Well, hello and welcome. I'm having a little bit of a lunch as I continue to do the automation of the the uh, deployment that I'm working on. I'm AJ. Would love to know who you are and what brings you to the channel today. Hmm. Let's see. So that one's done. Don't need to worry about that. I'm going to take this off. I'll take this off screen. Oh, that's too bad. My calendar notification popped up. I am missing the meet and greet at the office today. There's an inter-office meet and greet that I am missing. That is too bad. Free food, probably. I actually would like to be there, but uh, I'm doing the meetup tonight. And I don't want to drive down to Provo and then come back up here and grab stuff and then drive out to Lehigh and then drive back here. If it weren't the meetup today, I would maybe just be working at the office rather than working in the garage. Okay, we don't need that anymore. Okay, so let's run manual deploy one more time. Heaven willing, everything will run through to the end this time. If it doesn't, let me think about how I could make this smaller to just test one part of it rather than having to test the whole thing because it, it takes a while. I think to run the whole thing, provisioning a new system, takes about five minutes. So there we go. Creating a new VPS. Although, a fair of that amount of that maybe could be trimmed down. Let's see. I'm doing all of the build steps for the front end here on my Mac, which has 32 gigs of RAM. This is a, it's an iMac. I got it to do video editing and then they came out with the M1s. And now <clears throat> I'm thinking that I might get rid of it. But the problem is how do you get nice screens like this? It's a good size of screen, it's 27 inches. Somebody tell me, what is a good screen that looks nice just standing there that's a 27 inch screen? Because with the M1, I should be able to just get another 5K screen and put it here. But I think the screens, the, other, the only other 5K screens that are worth buying cost more than the whole iMac. Okay, what's going on here? Oh, another thing that I need to do that I forgot about is when we're doing the deploy for development, I need to make sure that the SSH keys are limited or the, the deploy for production should have limited SSH keys. Cause right now I'm just saying add every SSH key. And for development, that makes sense because any of the devs should be able to get into any of the systems that are being deployed, but that's fine. But that does not hold true for production because ideally no one should be able to get into production. Realistically, we need to because occasionally we need to go check things that are on the system and do a little hot fix and check it. 
but ideally production should deploy and oh are there some good log solutions other than CloudWatch? Is there something I could connect journal control to, to export journal control logs? Because that's what I'd prefer to do. And hello to those of you that are joining in. We're just watching some stuff scroll by as a instance of our application is being provisioned and... Installing. It's going to take another three or four minutes probably before it completes. It takes way too long. But the way to fix that hmm, would be, let's see, where are we at so far? The way to fix it would probably be to create an image that's a base image that has all the system stuff installed and then only be deploying. So rather than create a new instance and get it all set up, have an image that we create. I'll have to look into that. But I like to know that things can be set up from scratch. but it might be good to create an image and then select to deploy the image because the things that are in the image, well, they're still different between dev and prod. So for example, on prod, we don't have the database and the database tools on the instance. The database is elsewhere. And the stuff that we're doing with OpenOffice, I wanna put that into a separate service. And I think that it would be okay for how rare we use it. It would probably be okay, uh, meaning that it's used several times a day. It's not used several times a minute or even necessarily several times an hour. Um, so I would like that to be a microservice. But what we're doing with OpenOffice is just document conversion. I think it's to PDF or DocX. I don't remember. Well, hello, hello. Gosh. So many people joined in to watch me eat chips. This is amazing. I'm AJ. Would love to know who you are and what brings you here today. Um, I'm so glad that you could make it for all of this scrolling by. We've entered the matrix, as you can see. <laughs> and... Uh, my wife just brought me a nice um, red pill lunch. And so this is all being open to our mind's eye. Okay. All right. Still doing all of the server setup. But yeah. So if I, if I get open office into a microservice and we just have a separate thing for that, that'll cut down a lot of this time. Because so much of this time is just updating that. Uh, if we were to say that we didn't want to host the, well, here's the problem with the database. It makes sense for the database to be seeded and hosted on the same instance. And the reason for this is that as we're developing, we might be making changes to the database. And so it makes sense that for a development instance, we want the database there as well so that we can make local changes to the database. We could depend on the shared development database, but then we can't make changes to the database because then it would change for everybody. So that's my thought on that. But definitely, yeah, see here, it takes a fair amount of time to install OpenOffice. Oh, I keep on calling it OpenOffice. It's LibreOffice now. Sorry, old habits die hard. At least I'm not calling it Star Office. I think that's what it was originally called. And then Sun Microsystems was bought. And then every time one company buys another company, because of the trade, because the companies buy the thing for the trademark, right? But then the community follows the product. 
even if the name of the product changes. Okay, let's see. Uh, what does this tell us? All right, so that one got set up. That's expected. Moment of Truth is going to come here in a second. And if it doesn't work out, then... Yep, okay, didn't work. Why didn't it work? That's what I want to know. Column count doesn't match value count. So what this tells me is that it's still got the wrong version of the database. Hmm. Anyway, so Star Office, when it was bought, got renamed to Open Office. Then when Sun Microsystems got bought, it got renamed to LibreOffice. And so the trademark ends up not being as valuable as you might expect. It is valuable in certain cases, but one of the reasons these companies buy these products is for the trademark. Sun Microsystems, uh, when it bought OpenOffice, it bought it for the trademark. And then they end up abandoning it anyway. So now, what, OpenOffice is a Apache Foundation project because they abandoned it? So the question is, if you're going to abandon the project anyway, if you're not actually going, if you buy, if you acquire trademarks and intellectual property of that form, but you're just going to abandon it, why not release it back to the community? Why all the hard forking and such? And with MySQL, that's been particularly confusing because a lot of people don't know that MySQL is dead and that MariaDB is the replacement. So a lot of people still install these old versions of MySQL, um, which, you know. Ah. All right, I'm going to go over and figure out what's going on here. I have two suspicions. Uh, let me get back into this over this way. Okay. So suspicion A is that I didn't actually update environment to the right thing. I think I did though. Suspicion B is that it's actually just wrong. Let me see. Manual deploy. What do we call this thing? Dev DEF. Okay. Dev DEF. Okay, this is dev. So what's going on here? What am I to understand about this? Hmm, I'm gonna have to message somebody. All right, so I need to log into the development environment and figure out some stuff. All 
All right, let's check out master. Let's pull. Let's NPM run. Ah, there it is. <clears throat> there it is, right there. Uh, So what I need to do is get the dev database up to speed and then go update stuff. Oh no, that's not good. Crap. Mm, okay. Let's see here. So we're gonna do a rebase on master. Let's see how bad that screws this up. A little bit. Hmm. Only a little bit. You know what I'm going to do, though? I'm going to do git rebase uh, board. And I'm just going to step back. Let's do npx connects. Um, migrate down, I think it is. Good. Excellent. Okay, so now let's go back to master. Let's run npm run migrate. Okay. So that applied, that's good. So then let's check out the AJ branch. Hmm. And let's see. Get diff this. Let me make sure I've got this changed locally. I'm pretty sure I do. Hmm my domain and application URL. Let's see. Do we have the application URL? Yep, we do. Cool. Then I'm fine to blow this away. So let's go back here and do git reset. Well, I guess what I want is git pull. Hmm. So where, wait, where are the conflicts here? A couple of these things. All right, so git reset dash dash hard head tilde five, let's say. Let's pull and let's do rebase master. What? Git rebase master, okay. Let's do get push. Everything's up to date. Cool. So we don't even need to force push anything. I guess so the dev database was just out of date and that's that. So now if I go here and I check out development and then if I run update, then we should get a fresh copy of the database that should be up to date. Uh, sure. Update, 
update after latest migrations. Boom, and then push. All right, so with that pushed, let me see. I Sorry, I haven't been keeping a, an eye on the chat here. Okay, just silent watchers. Y'all are doing y'all's thing. Good, get your work done. Okay, so I'm gonna run the delete again. Okay. I'm pretty sure this time it's going to work. Get diff. That looks right. That looks right. stuff. I'm going to fold all those in. So that's why I prefix it with F as I've said before, if you were watching earlier. Okay. Actually cancel, 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 cancel. Let's go back to dev XYZ. XYZ. I'm going to go back to that one. And I'm going to go ahead and update my host file and get rid of all these janky do's. There we go. All right, <clears throat> now I just let it run. I'm pretty sure though, this time it will work because I've updated the dev database with the latest migrations. might be time for a second Mountain Dew. Hey, Alex from Germany. Or, well, you got both. You say Alex and Alexander. So I don't know what you prefer. We're going to go with Alex. Kai Hendry's fault. Good. Yeah, Kai seems like a cool guy. At least he's bringing me a bunch of people. So I'm. I need to do the same for him. Well, let me rephrase that. I, I've been wanting to actually watch his channel a little because one thing I, I want to be reciprocal, but I also, I just haven't taken the time to watch his channel. I'm assuming that he's got more high quality stuff than I do <laughs> and more followers than I do and all that, but I want to actually check out his stuff so I can give a shout out and say, yeah, here, here's a cool guy to follow, but I'm not very friendly. Especially not on Twitter. So am I, uh, me tweeting out, hey, here's who to follow, doesn't do much. Daddy, do you have a bottle? What bottle? Do you have a bottle to feed turkey? Hmm, a bottle for the turkey? Yeah. Hmm. Do you mean a baster, or do you mean bottle? A bottle. I don't know anything about a bottle for the turkey. I'll have to ask mommy. Is mommy asking you to ask me? Yeah. I don't understand what that means, but I'll go talk to her real quick, okay? Excuse me. Yes, you may ask about the keyboard. 
Give me 30 seconds here. My wife wants something about, um, something about a, something for the turkey. So, yeah. I'll be right back. I'll be probably 30 seconds, a minute, maybe. Coming back, y'all. I got a few more chips too. These are good chips. I like them. Some new thing Ruffles is doing. Healthy baked chips, something or other. Probably not, but well, not healthy. But and this is still running. We didn't miss a thing. All right. So let me let me um, get back to this. Oh, oh. Let me let me remove that. So anyway, to finish up my comment about Kai Hendry. Yeah, I want to check out his channel so that I can give it a good, honest recommendation and say, yeah, you should follow this person. This is what he does, and this is what I like about it. Um, although, it probably won't mean much, as much from me as it does from from him. Uh, but if you know anything about raiding channels, I'd, I'd be happy to raid him or someone else that you think we should follow at some point. Um, I've never tried it yet. Okay. Blessed Pigeon, get your work done. Man, it's midnight my time. I'm just super bored. Good. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad I can satiate your boredom. If I'm doing a good job, give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, give me a thumbs down and don't come back. Um, okay. So you said, may I ask you about your keyboard? Oh, by the way, we got more people joining in. Hello. Um, we're just watching the Matrix scroll by, so... Uh, I'm AJ. Would love to know who you are, and uh, and what brings you to the channel tonight or today. I said tonight because because Blessed Pigeon told me that it's midnight. <laughs> it is obviously the middle of the day. It is <laughs> 2 p.m. But as far as okay, may I ask about your keyboard and microphone? So my keyboard, nothing special. It's just Apple's Magic Keyboard. I actually like this latest iteration of the Magic Keyboard more than any of the prior iterations. This is, I think this is their best keyboard. I, I'm not as big of a fan of the new Magic Trackpad because, oh, bless me, um, I don't like that the touch is digital. It took about a month. I finally got used to it. I'm used to the fact that it's digital um, and that the haptic feedback is delayed. But it is really annoying when the computer locks up and it's got the beach ball of death then this stops clicking and that's just unnerving. I'm applying the same amount of pressure as I always have, but because it's a microphone and a little magnet spinner, basically the same thing as a rumble pack and a game controller, that's making it feel like a click is happening. It's making the microphone is going click and then the magnet's going top, tap. You know, it's just, it's uncanny valley is what it is. Uncanny valley is the term for when something particularly something digital, is too close to reality, but not quite close enough to reality. 
So I find the trackpad to be uncanny valley. But yeah, the, the thing that I do that's special with the keyboard is that I use better touch tool and I use carabiner elements. So if I can find where my mouse went, there it is. While well, this is just doing nothing there. Um, so we got carabiner, carabiner elements. And then we've got better touch tool. And better touch tool gives you the basics of better snap tool as well. So I remap, my caps lock is delete, my delete is delete forward, my write command and write option are enter and escape. So this is delete, this is enter, this is escape. And now I can't use a full size keyboard because a full size keyboard, the escape uh, goes here, it's all the way to here. And so, and then, you know, it's got the extra things, the keypad there. So I've tried to use a full size keyboard with the keypad, but it also puts the trackpad too far away. I guess I could layer. No, you can't really layer them. You can't layer them on your desk like you can on the laptop. It'd be cool if you could, but yeah, that's just gonna be too many false taps if I try to put this big, huge thing below my keyboard on my desk. And then the microphone is a Blue Yeti. It's really good. There's, there's some things out there that are just better than others. Sometimes it's better to go with the brand name. I've gone through trial and error process. Sometimes the brand names really suck. So for example, SD cards. SanDisk is not a great SD card manufacturer. Silicon Power is the best SD card manufacturer. It is the best one. Used them for years and years. I have no complaints with them. They're always rock solid, reliable. The speeds always match what they're advertised to be. Love Silicon Power. Um, the Blue Yeti is it's just a good mic. But I have a kit.co. So I'll just link this here. I got a couple of different kits. I got a kit for the GameCube stuff. I got a kit for, um, yeah. This is for the recording programming. Recording, recording programmer? What? This is what I use for meetups. That's my setup for meetups. Um... This is my YouTubing setup. I probably need to update that. There's probably a few different things I'd recommend. I think, I think I've think i added some stuff, but there's probably some rem removing some stuff that I could do. But yeah, I'll give you a link to this and you can look through. A Crux Neo Pro. I'm going to have to check that out real quick. What's a Crux Neo Pro? 60% keyboard, meaning that it is a mini keyboard? What is this, Polish? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's either a really big mouse or that is a really small keyboard. I just can't imagine using that. That would, if that, if, if you're saying it's a 60% keyboard as in a 60% size, which is what it looks like here, that can't be that small, is it? No. I mean, is there, do I have a mouse to compare? I can't use the tiny keyboards. I hate them so much. Cannot do it. Anyway, let's see if this deploy is finished. And if so, then I can tell my coworker that I told this morning, oh yeah, the new auto deploy is ready. We're at the tail end though. It's copying over static assets. That's the very last step. And then I should be able to test that I can log in. And if I can log in, then I can tell him, hey, it works now.
Okay. Hmm. So why is it stuck? What's left open? Okay, there it goes. Okay, one other thing I need to do. This is a pet peeve of mine. I make the, the mistake. Uh, I'm, I'm an offender here. Let's see, deployed. Mm. Oh. Anytime there's a variable, it ought to be in single quotes or double quotes. It's just a, it's just a polite thing to do. It makes it easier to grep through for stuff, but I think it's in the other repository. Anyway, um, if I'm not mistaken, I can just roll everything into this. Yeah, okay. I'm just do get rebase dash i head say 10 should do it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, danger, Will Robinson. Danger, danger. No, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Get rebase dash dash abort. Every once in a while this happens and I don't know why this happens. So let me do a pull here. Get checkout master. Get pull. Get checkout AJ. Get rebase master. Current branch AJ is up to date. Get rebase dash I head 10. Why is it doing this? I said head 10. So, you know, here's the question is why is this, why is there a billion of these, huh? Um, so get rebase dash dash abort. Get pull. Okay, get push. Well, that's, that's weird. Okay, let's try, now that I've pushed, head should be, what is going on? What is going on? What the flippy do? This is, if somebody knows how to explain this condition, I would love to know. Obviously, well, not obviously, I have no idea what's going on. I think head is pushing to something that's not what I'm expecting it to be pushing to. Um, so I'm going to do git push origin master from master. And then git checkout aj. And then I'm going to do git pull aj. And then I'm going to do a git rebase master. And then I'm going to do a git push origin aj. And it should say no change. And just to be clear, I'm going to do push dash fu origin aj. Okay, everything's set up. So when I do a git rebase dash i head 10, my question is, why is it bringing up 26 commits? But it's okay, I'm not gonna worry about it because you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go back to this, like that, and I'm gonna so, say git rebase dash i, and I'm gonna give it a specific commit, and then I'm gonna say, okay, just fold these things in. All right, so fold all of that up, roll it all up into this commit here. And then I'm going to push, boom. And then I'm going to make a PR. Um, I'm pretty sure, I really just want to see a list of files. Can I do that? Let's do git stat, stat, no, git diff stats, stats, master. Is that what I want? No. Uh, git diff stat. That's what I want. Stat master. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I just want the stat. So what we see is the only thing that's changed is the way the deploy works. Now, I'm going to have to be careful about this because of how this is going to affect... Hmm... Okay, let, I'm going to redo the deploy. We're just going to run the deploy again. We're not going to change anything. It's going to run on the same system that it's already run on. <clears throat> and then I probably, I need to take this and I need to do the same thing that I've done for staging. Let's just push all of the whatever branches are here, right? Should have this. Get checkout 
production. Okay, and then let's change this update script a little bit. And we'll check out prod one. I need to go check some things, but I need to, I need to make sure that this is pretty much ready for a production rollout. Even though we're not deploying to the pr production today, we've got several things that are rolling up before we deploy to production. All right, let me check and see what have I missed on the comments here. Okay, I use Carabiner 2. I map the caps lock as escape. Yeah, a lot of people do that. Um, I like it being delete. Escape makes a lot of sense too. I ought to, hmm. This would just, it would do get too weird. It would get too weird, but what I could do, and it would take me probably two weeks to get the muscle memory in place, but I could probably map return to delete or escape or something. I think delete is too crazy. Just, this is a useless key. Caps lock is a useless key. Nobody uses caps lock. Nobody expects it to be anything, right? Return is not a useless key. So that one, I don't know. That just seems so weird. And it's two keys away from where my pinky rests naturally. But then again, escape is a little bit far away from where my thumb rests naturally with the escape being escape being this key here. Whoops. Can we, that's my escape. So enter for me, escape for me, and then, uh, delete for me. On your MacBook, you don't have escape. Oh, touch bar. Yeah, that's that's annoying. Well, for me, it's about wrist pain. It was just it was too much repetitive stress trying to reach up to the escape key. I don't buy into any of the BS about typing faster, blah, blah, blah. It's all about wrist pain. Preserve your wrists. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it this way. First of all, let me... All right, get, check out... What was it? Uh, demo? Was it demo or staging? I think it was demo. Update.sh. Okay, and we're gonna do this. My API equals, we'll do it that way. And then we'll do this. This looks correct, yeah. There we go. I like that. Thank you, Shell Check. I appreciate you. You are a hero. Interesting. Something didn't go quite right here. Oh, demo one.
Okay, that should work. SQL seed. Oh, this is scary. I don't know if I want to do this. Hmm. Okay, I am putting single quotes around something there. Um, let's try this again. Hmm. Let's try this. So we're going to do our sync. My SQL dump command not found. How about this then? If empty oh command dash v my SQL dump. Then I don't want to install all the tools. Oh, this one's gross. This one's so gross. Uh, uh, uh. Hmm. Okay, we're going to do this a different way. We're not going to go that route. <clears throat> what we're going to do is... Hmm, I know what we're going to do. We're going to do what we should have done before anyway. We're going to source .envs because prod has its own database URL. Okay, let me, let me check. Um... Bought it from my comp from a company about six hundred fifty bucks, so it's worth it. Yeah. Well, I I recently bought a twenty twelve MacBook, and I'm not unhappy with it at all. I'm not sorry, not a twenty twelve, twenty fifteen. I'm gonna say twenty fifteen. Two hundred fifty bucks. Doesn't have a dual graphics though. That's the one thing that makes me sad. But I'm quite happy to have it. That's gonna be my my backup computer. I'm getting rid of my MacBook Air M1. Because my real M1 Max is gonna be here soon. I've got the one that I have right now. I've already submitted the return on it. I'm going to use it for the last time tonight. And tomorrow I'm switching over to the 2015 as my main computer for a week until the 16 inch gets here, finally. So I've got the 14 inch M1 Max. I'm switching over. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go into SQL Seed here. Gonna run everything, and then I'm not actually gonna need either of these. I probably could do this for. Can I do this for staging? 
think the staging database is only local. I think production is the only one where we have redundancy for the databases. Uh, let's see. Does this look right? I think it looks right. Let's let's try this way. Okay, DB URL is unbound. Oh, it wouldn't be dot env, it would just be env, huh? Mm -hmm. Adios, Alex. See you later. And yes, many thanks to Kai. Dude, you use Gentoo? Gentoo is for ricers. That was a 90s meme or 2000s meme. I don't know if that's still around. Do we still have Gentoo is for ricers? Let's see. I used to use Gentoo. Gentoo is basically how I learned Linux. <laughs> Gentoo is for ricers. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is it. Good. So this is not the original website, but this is the original post. <laughs> oh, fun roll loops. I think the name of the site used to be fun roll loops. Thirteen years ago, yeah, fun roll loops. That's what it was. We got anything in there? Interesting generic slices. Hmm. <laughs> they are descended directly from Julius Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> Much like your average voodoo witch doctor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why are you qualified to tell me how to be a ricer? I know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But yeah, I used to use Gentoo, and it was great because it taught me how to use Linux. I learned every single config file. And I think nowadays that Arch does the same thing. So why, why don't you use Arch? That's what I want to know. Why bother compiling everything from scratch? Uh, I, I mean, I definitely believe in dash dash teach me Unix. Um, I, it, like I said, after, after I used Gentoo and I only used Gentoo for a few months, but after using Gentoo, because I, I, I went around, I, I was trying to learn Linux and what it is and how the system architecture is, you know? And, and so I went, I, I went from Red Hat back then before it was Fedora. Um, it was, there was Red Hat and then Red Hat Enterprise, Red, Red Hat Community, Red Hat Enterprise. It was the last version of Red Hat Community, uh, Red Hat 9. And then the next version was Fedora 1. And then, I, what are we up to? Fedora 56 now? Um, and so I tried that, but there was a problem. This it was so weird. If you installed, there were two applications. If you installed them together, it would cause your system to halt and crash and reboot. And it was something like OpenOffice and GNOME. QuickBooks. I don't remember what it was, but it was accounting software, a double ledger accounting software. And I was, I was learning how to do accounting back then. This was back in high school. And if you installed both of them at the same time, it caused the system to crash. So then I tried another one. I tried Slackware. I tried probably Debian. I tried SUSE. I went through in a month every popular distribution of Linux, four or five of them, let's say. And then I found Gentoo. 
and I was in love because it taught me how to do everything. And after using Gen 2, probably, it was probably close to six months, actually, I switched to Ubuntu and I've never looked back. And I really don't care if I could make it 10% faster because that doesn't matter. None of any, none of the Linux stuff matters anymore. Linux only matters as a kernel to interface with RAM and CPU. And none of the other stuff matters anymore. I've given up on the Linux desktop. I need to blow my nose. Watch out, y'all. But don't watch. <laughs> oh, but it's true. It's true. <laughs> oh, those were good times. Just the memories. All right. So the problem we have here, we still don't have a MySQL dump command. All right, let's try this then. Let's try one more thing. Hmm. Okay, I think, what, what do we do, exec here? Okay, this might actually work. Oh no, it's not gonna work, because I don't have that installed locally. Okay, um, so I'm not gonna do that. I am going to do that, but okay. So here we're back at if we don't get good results from command dash V my SQL dump, then what do we do? I just want to install the client. Hmm. Where is MariaDB? Let the good times roll. We don't want MariaDB server, we just want MariaDB client. That's all I want. All right, can we fix it? Maybe. We'll find out in a few seconds. I don't know what the Gen 2 community is like anymore, but for a while I was the number two contributor on the Gen 2 wiki. Number one was the the person who published the wiki, but I was number two for so many months. I don't know how long it was, but I, I updated a lot of documentation pages. It was a lot of small updates, typo fixes, grammar fixes, um, adding an extra line of explanation, fixing a, a, a missing command. It's very, very simple stuff. But I was numero dos, and that was kind of cool. Whoop. Uh, 
Um, okay. Get pushed to shoe origin production. <clears throat> There we are. I am surprised the Jinchu is still around. Uh, honestly, I thought that Jinchu was more of a fad than anything else in the long run perspective. I didn't think it was a fad at the time. At the time, I thought it was really cool. And I, I met some people that ran their servers on Gentoo. Gentoo was really popular among sysadmins. The hardcore, some of the hardcore assignments for a little bit, but it seems that it's kind of, kind of Slackware Gen 2 Arch seems kind of to be the progression. Maybe Linux from scratch is somewhere in there, but Arch gives you all of the nitty gritty of Gen 2, but without all the compiling overnight of Gentoo. And so I thought that with Arch, Gentoo would kind of disappear. Although it is nice. It is nice that we have a community of people that is testing lots of different compiler configurations. I think that that is valuable for the world at large. When I compiled everything, it took me about eight hours, and it works better and better. I just can't believe that that's true. How much better? How how do you know that something is better when you're getting 3% performance gains? At the expense of using more RAM, you know? Explain me this. Maintainer in any community is hard work, especially if you don't have a company sponsoring your work. Ah. Mm. Mm. I had a stem. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to think, is there anything else I need to do? Did we actually run the manual deploy again? I forgot. Let's let's run the manual deploy again. What I really want to be able to do is to blow away dev and build it back better. Let's see. Oh, every time you run that oh, every time you run the time command, it's better. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, if you're 23, Gent is a great thing to be using. Yeah, if you, I, I think the younger you are, the more you should invest time in stupid tools. <laughs> and by that I mean, Gentoo is not practically useful. There, there's, you will probably never run into a job situation where the the solution that you need is Ubuntu. And more and more, with the advent of containerization and, and ephemeral instances, you're less and less likely to run into cases where you get to use most of what you learn with Gentoo, the X11 config and all that. But you... Knowing Linux well is definitely hugely useful. And Gentoo will teach you that. And Arch. 
I, I, I would be interested. Have you tried Arch? Why Gentoo over when when why Gentoo when Arch is available? Uh oh. E adder in use. Let's see. Okay, what did I do? Dev was it X Y Z? Let me see if I can log in. No! Is it Dev ABC? Hmm. That's weird. Dev XYZ, yeah. coming back I must have typed it in wrong let's type XZY or something all right let's see yes everything's looking good that's not even the right what Account was created. There was a network error. I don't even know what this means. Okay, let's find out what this is about. We're not getting a refresh token. That's expected. Okay, I'm really confused right now. Something terabad's going on. Bad gateway? No, we shouldn't have a bad gateway. <sighs> I'm just going to sleep it off. After all this work, something's broken. I'm just going to go sleep it off. Access denied error for username at localhost. That doesn't make sense. What is going on? All right, something's going wrong with the database connection. Why is it username? I'm pretty sure I set that to be... Oh, oh, I think I know why. Hmm. I think I know why. We need to update the environment file. Oops, now all that. Um, Golang is awesome. Golang is great because it's used everywhere. It's one of the most popular, widely adopted languages. Although people often don't think of it that way because... It's not what's taught at boot camps and stuff. But everything you use online is got infrastructure built in Golang. So Golang is definitely one of the most widely deployed languages. It's up there with JavaScript in terms of it is all over the place. Hmm. So why not Arch? That's the, that's what I want to know. If you used Arch, why Gentoo? Did you not learn Linux well enough using Arch? I think that ought to be a part of any developer's first week at their job, they ought to be tasked with they have to install Ubuntu. And then install Arch. Oh, sorry. Did I say Ubuntu? I meant Gentoo. That 
that's how you should test somebody's ability to follow instructions and problem solve is see if they can install Arch and Gentoo. If they can, hire them. If they can't, just be done with it. And they'll say, but, but I'm a developer. Yeah, well, you should be able to use your brain, friend. That's how to suss them out. Well, that's kind of negative language to say suss them out, but... It would be a better litmus test than what we apply today. And by we, I mean the broad general community. All right, so my problem, my problem is that if I install, if I run the script to install the database and set a user, what also needs to happen, yeah, where's my env file? Interesting. This probably needs to be okay. So this is not quite right here. <coughs> That's right. I probably could just put this all in. Wait, is that right? I don't know if that is right. Yeah, that's right, okay. Hmm. I gotta think about this. Hmm. All right. So this is the this is the next problem I have to solve. Essentially, this shouldn't be a problem. I think I just need to change the development deploy so that when you deploy dev, it doesn't have the DB URL in it. I think that would fix this problem. I'm going to go check. So... Um, let me look into, I have to go do this off screen because I'm not going to bring up that env file on that screen, but do we have db url? Hmm. Wait, this looks right. This db url is correct. What? Uh... Okay, something is wrong. Because the error message here was complaining that it can't connect. I mean, let's let's scroll back here. Let's scroll back. I'm going to bring this back over. I'm going to let's see. All right, error message is there are so many changed files that the environment. 
have been overrun. All right, that makes sense. Watch exec is confused. That's okay. Error loading things. Access denied for user username at localhost. So let's see where's the error loading things come from. It just doesn't make any sense. Access error denied. Access denied for username at local host. Hmm. Sudo system CTL restart. Take a look at it now. Okay, this looks fine. Hmm. I gotta think on this for a second. So I think the problem was that at the end, too many files had copied over, watch exec got overloaded, and a restart needed to be done. Yeah, because now it's logged in just fine. Okay. So I just need, I need something to fix that particular problem. Um, let's look at git deploy, my SQL. Hmm. And init local MySQL only happens if it happens on local. So that's fine. Um, so I guess what I should do is after all of this, And the deploy API step. Should probably do system. Well, let's let's check and see. Scripts 04 API. System CTL. Okay, if it's development, then we absolutely should be able to do system CTL stop my service name and even disable. No, I don't want to do disable, but it should be able to do stop. <coughs> and really that should probably happen before I R sync over a bajillion files. But whatever, we're going with it. All right, I'm going to do this deploy again and see if it works. <sighs> Raw One Games, what's up, man? Good to see you as well. Oh, and I need to catch up on a couple of other comments. All right, so I am not understanding some of these comments entirely, Yorun. When I watched what you do with Golang, it's my stupid mind. I mean, I was kind... I, w I was... I was a kind, I think, I would like to be a cousin the same as him. I, so there was, there's something there that either I'm missing the comments or they're coming out of order. I, I don't quite understand that. 
So if, if those were responding to different things and I hadn't been checking the comments, just tag it or let me know, or, I mean, we can let it pass if you just want to let it pass, but I'd like to keep up with that conversation. I just, I, I've missed out on something there, but we can be cousins, yo. We can be cousins. Uh, all right. And our, our, our raw one games, what are you up to today? No, let me see if I can just do a refresh here. Is this going to work? Okay, it's working. So I think that that change of making sure that I stop the service and let it restart, I think that was important. Let's uh, just try to log out again and log back in. I really don't like, our form does not work with password managers and that bugs me because it should work with password managers. Okay, something's completely broken here. 502, 502, 502. Okay, so why am I getting 502s? Do I literally just have to go in and restart the service. It says it's closing. Hmm. Sudo system control stop savvy rest one. Job is done. Okay. Okay, so something is wrong. Oh, something's wrong here. I'm going to swap these around. If it's in de development, stop it and start it again. Well, that wasn't much of anything. Let's just flip it flopping. All right, let's try one more time. Then I'm gonna to need to take a break, go take a walk or something. Maybe shave, I'm getting kind of scruffy. <clears throat> Easy, what's up? Uh, what's what's the issue with the TCP? Are you starting, well, I wonder if you're starting at the beginning. Um, So let me, I'm going to try to relook at these comments and try to reorder them in my mind in a way that would make sense. No, I can't reorder them in a way that makes sense. Sorry. <laughs> well, it's not stupid Twitch. It's just bots in general. Cause, because we got, we got, we got restream is switching uh, how things are posted. So. I lost all my fake friends. I want to start a new life, man. Hmm. That sounds rough. That's rough. That's some, that's some soul bearing. I can feel that. I've been there. Uh, let's see. When I was a child, I would be like my cousin. What does that mean? When I watched your videos about Golang, it gave me a thought about it. Oh, okay. All right. I'm, since I 
have not been in your childhood. I'm not entirely sure what that's like, but the sentences make more sense now. Um, so in, in talking to raw one, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for asking. Um, I'm just, oh, it's, it's always the last, you know, 10% of a process, figuring out how to automate a process that gives you the headaches. Cause it's the little bits of why isn't this quite working? And so I'm just going through some of that, but, uh, now obviously I'm just some dude online, um, uh, I, I, I don't I don't feel that I'm in a place to be a a real friend, but uh, if you wanna you know you probably don't want to unload your whole soul here on YouTube and in a chat and all that. But if you wanna if you wanna chat a little bit, I'm happy to chat with you. I I've had life turn upside down before and. You know, so I, I, I don't know exactly what your, your, your thing is that's going on, but I have some, some level of, of empathy for needing a fresh start. Okay. Let's see if we can go here to the login and get logged in. Ah, that's what happened. Okay, I see. So I selected the form and then it changed the password. Got it. Okay, so you actually can get here, but it's okay. It still works. Account created. Please wait as we set everything up. All right, cool. Okay, it works. Finally. Finally, it works. I am a little bit concerned. Here's what I'm concerned with. So when we go into staging, well, the watch exec, one of the problems was the watch exec was flipping out or freaking out, right? So we're changing a bunch of files and then we're starting a service and watch exec. That's not the process we want with watch exec. The reason that we want watch exec on development is we go into the box, we change some stuff. We'd want it to just restart as we're changing things. We don't want that in staging or production. Why is it cool in here? I'm going to turn up my, uh, I'm, a, I'm afraid to turn my heater up to level two because it sucks up more power. I might trip a breaker because the entire garage is on one line. And so no matter which outlet I use in the garage, all of it goes to the one breaker. So you can only have, let's see. I think the breaker is so many amps. Was it 10 amps, 15 amps, probably 15 amps. Anyway, 15 1500 watt heater basically takes up half the power. And so everything else, I got some lights, which shouldn't be that much because they're LEDs, but the computer is a good, let's see right now, the computer, according to the UPS monitor, the computer is only taking up hundred Watts right now. Um, but anyway, it's not, it's not hard to trip the breaker, but I'm putting the heater up to level two. I'm going to have to find a different solution when winter hits hard. I'm going to have to somehow, I don't know if I can, I don't know what I can do. I don't know. I don't know how to be able to crank up the heater and have the computers running. Cause even now, if I turn this heater all the way up, it would probably cause the breaker to trip. I guess what I'd have to do is have the heater heat up the room put the heater on max and then turn it back a little because once the heater's warmed up all the way, then it's good. But I haven't even warmed it up all the way. It's an oil, one of those oil heaters anyway. So thank you very much. I know it's not good to say your problems online. Well, only because, well, in a forum like this is public and whatever you put there, you know, it's going to be there forever. So 
that's that's the thing. No one should think about problems and negative things. I don't know. I think you gotta. I, I believe in the meditative mindset that you acknowledge what is and you let it be and you accept it. And if if it is reasonable, you let it pass. And if it's not reasonable to let it pass, then you work on it and then you let it pass. Uh, write things down and then come back to them later. When you write something down, it takes a load of mental burden off your brain. This is well studied, well understood. Well, maybe not well understood, but at least well documented. So if you write problems down, then you can you can let them pass from your mind and you can let your mind go on to other things. But yeah, it's rough. Uh, nice coding tutorial. Which one? Are you referring to what we're doing here now? Because I feel that this has been... <laughs> terrible <laughs> in the sense that it's just lots of problems, little tiny problems that I'm, you know, coming out across. I see a bunch of people have joined on. So hello to those of you that joined. I'm AJ and I am working on an automated deployment for work right now. And I think I got, it. I think I, I think I've got it. I'm, I'm going to try this. Uh, it says manual deploy. It's not really the, ma well, all things are manual as in it's not being automatically deployed by the system. But what I should be able to do, I'm going to check this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another branch. My branch is going to be called dev123. And I'm going to push it. And a few minutes later, there should be a dev123. And the domain is set up. And the, the instance is set up. And the database is set up. And everything. It should be a brand new, a brand new thing. Also, well, so I think, I think it's, not too big of I've hinted this a few times. We are going to do a rebrand. I don't know exactly what the extent of the rebrand is, but we, part of the rebrand may be that we change between the name of the product and the name of the company. Those might become separate things. Um, I'm not really there. There's part of, I think we're keeping the same logo, but we're going through a rebrand. And so I'm going to wait until we go through a rebrand and then I want to get a .dev domain of whatever our rebrand name is. I want to get a .dev domain for us to dev on. Okay, so everything went through. Let's refresh. All right, can I log in? Yes, I can. All right, we're good. Okay, so this is the very last test. Hold on. Um, I'm going to do a little rebase here. I'll just fold that in. Git push F U. All right, I'm going to do a git checkout dash B dev one, two, three. And I'm going to do a push dash U origin dev one, two, three. Okay, so it's going to take a few minutes, probably about five, but everything that's been done, everything should be deployed and working. Um, we will have a dev one, two, three in a matter of, of some number of minutes. And... I might get this whole, so essentially if I want to put this on GitHub Actions, all I have to do is, uh, I got to do a little bit, I actually, this article, the Vanilla DevOps GitHub Credentials Cheat Sheet, this is really good by the way. Um, if you ever do deploy from Git, do this right here. So here's uh, vanilla, and if you just search this, the vanilla DevOps Git credentials cheat sheet. I want to make a, its own website for that. I've thought about it a few times. Um, if anybody wants to help me put that up real quick, turn that that article and just a, into a single page website. Let me know because if you if you could if you if we could put it up on say a Duck DNS and you just make it pretty and we give you some attribution in there, uh, you know, designed by so-and-so or whatever. Um, 
and you know maybe we could put a nav bar in there so you can click and go to sections pretty easily but I'd like to make a a single website for this uh, and I have the domain in mind what I want it to be um, whoops but uh, so if I want to deploy this to GitHub Actions anyway I got to follow there's there's another bit of information too the rootcompany.com is it this one there's there's basically three pieces of information I would I would pull from um, I don't think we actually need this. That's just what I, that's just something I figured out. So we would need, uh, it's on my GitHub, my GitHub, cool age 86. And then I think I called it explore GitHub action. So I'm going to put this link here. Um, GitHub shallow clones. There's that. And then, and then GitHub Actions sans. Well, I won't say sans. I'll say without. Without the Kool Aid. So basically, this is how you run Bash scripts from GitHub Actions. But what you what you will need is you'll need your token for uh, being able to do a Git clone, and that is. Where did I put that? I thought I put that in here somewhere. Token? GitHub token. Yes. Oh, and there's another another thing, which would be, and this is under Beyond Code, because this one is good and high value. If you look at the Bliss template, the way that this GitHub Actions is set up, this is what I would essentially need to do. Because this one actually does clone from the repo. Yes, this is exactly it. So clone repo from GitHub actions. That right there. Okay. Oops. Let me go back, 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 back a little bit. Anyway, so what I was saying about this, and then I'm going to respond to some of the comments, but what I was saying about this is that the next step, actually, I entirely forgot. <laughs> I entirely forgot what I was saying. <laughs> oh, if I, yeah, if I want to deploy from GitHub Actions and I need to run these Git clones, that's what it was. And I got to run. I got to run the Git clones from other repos. All that I really need to do is just make sure that I put the GitHub token into the the the, the instance that runs the GitHub actions. The token needs to be in its Git config for that temporary time that that instance exists. And then I would just set a few environment variables, and then I would run the Git deploy script. I ought to do a little tutorial of how to run Git deploy scripts from GitHub Actions. Me and about five other people would be the only ones that benefit from it, but that's okay. It would be of great benefit to me to just have a quick copy paste guide of here's how I take a, uh, a here's how I run my Git deploy script from, from GitHub Actions without having to change a whole bunch of stuff. Um, although I don't know with GitHub Actions, I don't know how much disk space you get and how much RAM you get. It takes a lot of RAM to run these stupid create react app builds. Uh, that's, but I, blah, 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 blah. anyway, um, while we're still waiting, because I think that thing is still probably deploying, there is something I wanted to look at in here. Why is there a Babel? What dependencies do we have that could possibly depend on Babel? I don't see anything in here. Okay, what in the world? And okay, let's take a look at our dev dependencies. Do we have dev dependencies here? And then I'll then I'll uh, look at the comments and and respond to some of those. Um, because I, I'm pretty sure I saw under our node modules we have Babel. Yeah, we have Babel. Why the letter L? Do we have Babel? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of Babel. Why? 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 Why you got Babel in my? Code frame, dependencies. 
going to be... Why would something depend on Babel at runtime? Font kit? Font kit is what depends on Babel? Do we have anything else that depends on? MJML depends on Babel. Ugh. Ugh. Why'd you do that to me, MJML? Why? Why you gotta be like that? Hmm. I see, I see. MGML is my new enemy. I thought they were kind. I thought there was few dependencies, but they lied to me. Did it have all those dependencies when I started with it? And then parse JSON needs Babel? What? Why do we need a parse JSON module? Okay, now we're back at the top, I think. Yeah. So let's see, where's parse JSON coming from? Cosmic config? Oh, and then I have to figure out where cosmic config comes from. Okay, let's find that out. Where's cosmic config comes from? Okay, it is from lint staged. And where's that come from? Probably Husky. Let me see. Dev dependencies, lint staged. Do we even do anything with lint staged? I don't think we do. Lint staged. Might not make any sense. Oh, okay, I get what it's doing. Hmm, okay. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, let's go check and see if our dev123 is up. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, I'm going to go check on something to see if I can get a status of if it failed to build. All right, I see dev123 is in some of my logs. And it looks as though it was successful. I don't have a failure code for it. Hmm. Oh, no, it did fail. It failed right away um, because there is something that is missing. Hmm, I'm gonna have to go on the other screen real quick. Let me, I guess this is a good time to check comments. Yes, sweetie? Oh, yeah. So my daughter made a, a turkey. Now, earlier she came in asking if I had a bottle to show me a turkey. So this is what we're going to do. So I can keep things in my head. What was I doing over here? I need to um, add missing ENVs to build server. Uh, just one second, sweetie. Uh, give me Give me one minute. Let me just check, um, what do you think? What's better, vanilla Node.js or Node with Express Framework? Fastify, learn Fastify. Uh, there's a great, so there, there is no such thing as vanilla Node.js. Uh, you, you will use Express or Fastify. Um, Utah Node.js on YouTube. We just had a talk on this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you a link to it. I'll be there. I'm coming out in just a second, sweetie. Uh, let me link to, I'm just, I guess I'm just going to link to part one here. Fastify. Check that out. That was, that's a presentation, good presentation, a really good presentation that we had at Utah Node.js. Uh, let me see other questions. Automate the installation of CentOS with your configuration via Anaconda. Uh, sorry about my bad English. Thank again for your thank you again for your texting talking. With uh, with our configuration. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, I'm going to sleep, so see you later. All right. Well, you go to sleep. I'll be right back, and then we will we will add the missing ENVs and rerun the build server and be good to go. Oh, that last one percent. It's taken me all day. <laughs> Uh, okay, but I, I'm going to go, whoops, um, 
Mm, there we go. I'm just going to put up the getting the door sign. I'll be right back. So, can I have my turkey? Yeah. So this this is the turkey that she made. This is my daughter's turkey. This is why she came in asking for a plastic bottle earlier, for a turkey bottle, because she wanted to make a this turkey is with a mommy. Turkey, the turkey bottle. Oh, it's a turkey bottle. Yeah. All right. So I'll be right back. All right, sweetie. Thank you so much for showing me. That's a beautiful turkey. I'm going to take my warm Mountain Dew and trade it for a cold one. I got the awesome turkey. It is an awesome turkey. Here's another one. Here's another one. Oh, yeah. Here's another one. 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 Here's I don't know why I grabbed another cold Mountain Dew. I don't actually think I'm going to drink it right now because I'm going to finish this up and I'm going to go for a walk and then maybe I'll come back and do another. So you, you cannot reasonably write anything in Node without uh, NPM. Well, so there's, you typically you don't have an NPM, you don't have binaries on the NPM registry. Typically it's just JavaScript bundles. So there are some binaries for certain things where they load a C++ or it's, it's C++ or Rust that is pre-compiled in the, the node module format. But I think it's funny. We've had three, three different node module formats over the years. And I think that the one that they had just created is going to be abandoned for the WASM uh, format. I think that that is that the, the compiling. Well, we'll see. I know I don't think it's going to entirely go away because there are things that I don't think you can get to from WASM. For example, if you wanted to use any of the the syscalls, uh, I don't think you can do syscalls from WASM. I think you can just get efficiency on computation with WASM, but I could, I could be mistaken on that. We'll see. Anyway, uh, thank you. Uh, my daughter is very cute. You are correct. But yeah, vanilla node. It, there's no. There's no such thing as vanilla node. That that really. There is no such thing. So node is not like Go, where it has an expansive standard library that has everything that you need, and you can just get what you need done from the standard library. That's just not. That's not how node is built. That's not part of their ethos. So, and the the built-in routing with node. There is no built-in routing. So you will need to use Express. Express is not a framework. Express is just a routing library. Express is fairly lightweight, but I don't recommend Express. I recommend FastFi instead. Um, you can basically follow a Express tutorial and then just switch out the require Express with require, require FastFi. That's more or less going to work for you. Also, I'm going to link you to something as well. Uh, anybody who is using Express and you have to use Express, uh, one thing that you don't have to punish yourself with is all of the async problems. Um, so here is async router. And I've got a little video tutorial with it. And this is one of those things that um, it has very few stars, as you'll notice. You'll, you'll find other modules that are similar that have 
15,000 stars. The difference is this one works correctly. Uh, stars on GitHub are not an accurate representation of good, complete, or accurate code. Um, I have found over the years, so I forked this from someone else and I fixed a bug in it. And I think at the time I forked it, I think he had somewhere between zero and one stars. And then, um, yeah, <laughs> so it looks like at least three of the stars came from... I think, yeah, I think three of the, the four stars on the project came from me. So I think the only star was himself when I found it. But it was good code. And I could not believe that the other solutions that are out there to solve this problem have been propagated when they're just, they're crap. They're just literally, they're bad. They either don't solve the problem or they don't solve it in a reasonable way. Um, they, they, they require breaking changes to the code and whatnot. This... It doesn't require any breaking changes. You can go into any company that is currently using Express and you could start using async router without breaking the existing code. And if anything, if I am wrong on that in any regard, you can let me know because that is a bug and I will fix it. Okay, anyway, let's go ahead and add the missing environment variables to the build server. So I need to do this over in the other screen. Um, so let's see here. Okay, I see the environment variables on the build server. So what is going wrong? Something's going wrong probably with a path. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's see, dot get deploy. I think it's this right here is probably what's going wrong. I think I need to change this into, well, I think I need to do this. I think that is it. Um, let's see, what is it complaining about? Yeah, I can't follow something, something, I don't care. That's all right. Okay, so we're gonna check and see. I think that is probably all we need. Well, I won't catch my count count my count my chickens before I catch them. We'll see. All right, going to sleep. Twelve eighteen a.m. and you're going to sleep that early. <laughs> all right. Well, you have a good night anyway. Oh, I don't get sleepy until at least two. Well, that's not true. I went to bed early last night. All right. Well, you have a good one. Your mistake. I don't think there was any mistake that you made. Um, there. Woo. I got a little uh, award. 100 messages today with Restream Chat. Huzzah. All right. So for those of you that are still on the stream, who the heck are you? And where did you come from? Let's see, uh, mostly YouTube, it looks like. Still some people on Twitch. Dear Twitch people, how do I increase engagement on Twitch? Because Twitch seems that it would be naturally the platform that would have more people engaging. Uh, but I think because I don't understand Twitch as a community and an ecosystem, I don't get a lot of engagement on Twitch. All right. I'm going to go check uh, some status messages if I can find out where the letter L they went. And I'm also going to load something on my phone real quick. Trust this computer. No, no, I don't want to trust that computer. All right. So I'm going to do two things. All right, I'm going to refresh this and I'm going to load on my phone. I'll, I'll show you this. So I've got this bound app for my phone. It's called bound. 
and you can load audiobooks onto your phone with it if you got an iPhone. With Android, you have to use something else. Let's see if I can go to my audiobooks folder. Uh oh, everything's seized up. What's going on? Audiobooks. Oh, there we are. Lightbringer. I need to get both of the Lightbringer books on my phone. So one day I can catch up with my wife. She's gotten ahead of me. All right, good news. Holy moly, this is probably going to be terrible in terms of its size. All right, this time everything seems to be running. The build, the build process has been running for a couple of minutes. So this has been running for two minutes, and I'm, I, I would show you this, but I, I can't for certain reasons. But, yeah, I can see my git deploy job is running. Hmm, interesting. There is one problem that I don't know what to, how to consider. Um, hmm, it says that there's a lock when it's trying to install MariaDB. Waiting for lock, waiting for lock, waiting for lock, waiting for cache lock. Oh, that's I saw this error before. Maybe I can just bring this over. Hold on, I'll just copy this. I'm gonna bring over some of the log info so that we can look at it together. There we go. And it's it's better touch tool. Uh, the, the snap tool functionality of better touch tool that's allowing me to snap windows that is not built into Mac OS. I found out a while back. I thought it was because it was on all the computers that I used. Anyway, this right here, I'm not, I'm not clear on why it's getting this because uh, it's, it, it ran a process here just fine. Waiting for cache lock. And then it seems, to, I guess it, it got it. Maybe it gets it. So it's waiting for the cache lock. It waits a little bit, and then I guess it gets it, and then it continues. That must be what's going on. I don't know. All right, let me see where we're at here. I would imagine at this point we should get at least nothing. So if I just go here... Hmm. That doesn't seem right. DNS probe should have worked fine. Whoops. It says DNS probe, but I'm pretty sure one of the first things we do is oh, you know what it is? I know what it is. So locally on my computer, because I tried doing this before. I got a cached a, a cached negative response, and that cached negative response probably lasts for a couple of minutes. So if I go here in the terminal and I ping one two three, we might still not get anything. But if I were to do a dig plus trace, we'll probably see that it resolves just fine. Uh, let's see. Hmm, that's odd. That doesn't seem right. Hmm. I'm a little confused. What was the branch name? The The branch name is dev123. Yeah. Okay. So... I, I guess I could think of... Did it do this by mistake? Oh... Oops, 
So I, I made a I made a goofo where the dev is being stripped off. I thought I already fixed that. So there's the dev prefix. My sub prefix. Oh no. And my uploads failed on the phone because I was inattentive and the time ran out. Well, let's try that again. Nope. Dag on big files. Okay, so let's let's see what happened here. My sub prefix is we're gonna cut the get ref name and that's gonna be the sub. I guess that's okay. Okay, so if I push dev hyphen one two three according to this, then it will push as just the one, two, three. That makes sense. It makes sense that I do it that way. So this might be right. Okay. So then I should be able to get rid of these and just push dev AJ, dev will, dev whatever. And then we could do the same thing for staging. And we could just have different zones. Maybe I could make it 123.dev or whatever. 123.staging.whatever. Anyway, let's check and see what we got here. Well, hello to those of you that are still on the channel. Thanks for enduring all of this with me so that I'm not alone through my stupidity. It's bad enough to be stupid. It's worse to be stupid and alone. Okay, is this really... This this deployed nine minutes ago? And it's still not done? Is this, is this for serial? Yes, it is for serial. Let me go down to where we're... Oh, okay, because it's deploying the front end as well. That makes sense. And the, the front end all on its own takes about five minutes because it's just stupid CSS compiling. I might want to add some more RAM to that or something. But I'm going to be so excited if this all works, which I hope it will. <sighs> oh no. Some bots going through and liking a bunch of my stuff. I guess it doesn't matter. All right, so we're just kind of waiting. Wow, look at that. Okay, let's see how long that took. Uh, about 11 minutes. Oh, it says it failed. I don't think it failed. I think it says it's failed because it got... Sometimes it says it fails because there are uh, messages in the logs, such as error, but they apply to, for example, an NPM module went to build and it wasn't able to build, so it did a fallback. And so it has error output, but ultimately the status code was successful. It just had error messages. Yeah, failed. There's a couple messages in here that say error, error, failed, etc. But they are actually just something didn't work and then it failed over. Yeah.
and that could be okay too. Okay, so one other thing. Um, yeah, no, this is good. This is good. So here we are. We can log in. So I'm going to take this and copy that email. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. We'll go with this one. We'll go with that email. And then, no, 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 why? Ah. Seriously? What failed? Bad gateway. Why? Why do you have a bad gateway? All right. Let's see what's going on. nothing okay let me see if I can find right before it started building the front end what happened I'm looking through log messages for the build server here Oh, okay, I see what the problem was. Thankfully, it's a very slight problem. Just one of those silly, stupid things. <sighs> Can't stop the service if the service hasn't been started. That's all. Just that. That one little tweak. So then if I go in here, set no number. That was where it failed. So I guess I, I should do, um, okay, what, what if we do this? So I should be able to sudo system control stop blah, blah, blah. All right, so what if I do status blah, blah, blah. Okay. Hmm. All right, so this is what we do then. All right, I, I know what to do. I know what to do. So we'll do this. We'll do if grep could, could not, then fee. So if we don't get back the message from status, that it couldn't be found, then we stop it. So if it's there, then we stop it. Boom, done, solved. All right. That's not what I wanted.
Okay. Switch to new branch. Git push fu dev one two three. Alrighty. Hold on. Sorry, I'm responding to a message. I got distracted. Okay, sorry, I got distracted. I don't remember exactly what I was going to do because I got distracted. All right, so the instructions are git branch dash d. Whoops. Get branch dash D AJ get fetch all get checkout AJ get checkout dash B dev well get push And you gotta wait about 10, 11 minutes for the very first ever build. You can check the status on the build server. All right. So let's see if I am telling the truth or lying. Come on. Oh, I lied. I didn't mean to lie, but I did. Okay, why did it fail this time? Hmm, it says pending. Why would it be pending? Oh, interesting. Okay. So I think when it had that lock, that lock problem I showed, I think that it didn't actually install all the OpenOffice 
stuff. Okay, anyway, where the heck did my chat go? Ah, Altera, sorry, I wasn't looking at the chat uh, for the last several minutes. Oh, okay, you weren't too long ago. How long did it take you to get to this point in skill level? You can always be retarded. It doesn't take any time to get to that skill level. Oh, well, no, I just feel retarded right now because... It's taken me, it took me about a day to get everything working. Well, to get, to get all the individual pieces working and to get one test through and say, yeah, it worked. And now it's taken me about another two days to finish that last little bit of, oh, make sure that it actually deploys on the dev servers properly. But I, I've been doing stuff with computers since I was 15, maybe. So, <laughs> uh, see, I just got your comment there. There's a little bit of a delay, but glad you like that answer. I've been doing stuff since I was about uh, 15, and <laughs> um, I started programming in earnest right before I got to college is when I really started learning to program. Um, but in high school, I'd been doing Linuxy stuff and DevOpsy stuff, and then... Yeah. So, about 20 years total messing with computers. But how long did it take to get to the skill level that I am now? I don't feel like I've had a lot of growth recently. I'll say that. I think that there is a point where you pretty much know all the things that are relevant things to know. There are, there's still patterns out there that I don't understand. There's still tools out there that I don't understand. But I think with most things, about 10 years is how long it takes to master the craft if you're dedicated to it. Um, and I think that it's possible to gain that knowledge a lot sooner. But the problem is also you need the experience of running into problems and finding solutions. So there's a tweet I saw the other day. Let me see if I can dig it up real quick. Um... I think I liked it, so it should be on one of my Twitter accounts under my liked tweets, I suppose. Let's see if I can figure it out real quick. Boom, 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 boom. I don't know what systemd in spawn is. I know not... I knew not that there was such an in spawn. Tell me more. Nat 418. Okay, let me, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it, but I'll just, I'll summarize it. Uh, no, I'm going to look, I'm going to look a little harder because I'm pretty sure I retweeted it because I thought it was so good. Yes, I did retweet it. Here we go. I put it on the Beyond Code channel. By the way, for those of you that are coming and going and all that, if you find this useful at all, uh, give it a like, share it with a friend, a good friend. Or if you don't like it, give it a thumbs down and share it with a frenemy, huh? Um, and subscribe and click all the things and yada, 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 right? Uh, so this, I think, this is the summary of how, how you know when you have arrived in something is essentially if you look at all this what what it gets what it gets at is that the the end is not that different from the beginning in the end what you end up trying to do is find more more uh to find better ways to do the naive approach so the, 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 I think this is an ultimate goal of software engineering is to make it easier for people to do the right thing. You want the naive approach to work. You just want the little nuanced details figured out. So here is uh, you know, junior level coder. Do something, object.bass. 
And this could fail because object might not exist, or baz might not exist. And then the mid-level coder uses all the cool things that they learn about classes and, and structures and object restructuring and, and thisness, and it, they use every tool at their disposal and create something really complex that is difficult to understand and doesn't really help you do anything at all. And then the senior level developer is back at the original naive approach, but with the nuance fix for the actual problem. And yeah, so that's that. Anyway, let's see. It's working. All right. So there's probably some things that don't work in here. But let me go check my email. I probably have a million D verification emails that have gone out. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, I need to go check on that. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I do not see the emails. Oh, here they are. Okay, please verify your email. Cool, so I did get the verification emails. Let's see if the URL is correct in the verification email, and indeed it is. Okay, let's go verify your account then. I don't quite like this, to be honest. It's too many characters to, to be... Yeah, anyway, that's all right. Hey, and it worked. Sweet. Okay, Altera, let me see what... Uh, let me catch up with the comments here. Uh, did your college major have to do with coding? Uh, yes, but because I already knew that that's what I wanted to do, and I dropped out of college. So I went to college, and college introduced me to more people who were smarter and people that were in the workforce. College basically introduced me to user groups and meetups. Actually, I got into those at the end of high school. I resurrected, there was a meetup group that hadn't been meeting up for about, I think it was two or three years. No one, no one had met up. It was an old mailing list and I resurrected it with pizza. I just said, hey everybody, let's get together. It looks like the group hasn't met in a long time. I'll buy pizza. Let's get together. And then after I did that, uh, I, I got the group going for about um, th somewhere between three and six months. I became the de facto president of the group. And then I left. Uh, I, I went to move to a different country. I lived in Albania for two years. And so after I graduated high school, I left. And, and then the group kept on going forever and ever. And I still occasionally see emails go out. I, I think they stopped in Corona times. I think they kind of died out a little bit before then, because I think the college scene there, college scenes are typically meetup scenes, college and business park scenes are meetup scenes anyway. Uh, but that was, that was what was really um, important. And I ended up, I ended up dropping out because I learned so much once I started going to meetups that I was just bored in classes. The classes did teach a lot of the theoretical stuff, some of which is really important. It's it's good to have some of the theoretical foundations down pat, but it was just too much theory and not enough practice. And I definitely believe that I was better off for me personally dropping out of college and just going into the workforce. Um, and because I was going to meetups and, and I could get recommendations from people, it was easy for me to get a job. Uh, okay, you can completely agree with that. I don't know what I actually said that you agreed with at that time because I, while I'm monologuing, I'm not reading the comments. I uh, just realized you're using Brave on Mac. Didn't know there were fellow users on Mac. Indeed. Indeed. And then I don't remember what I said about Resurrected, but I did say something about Resurrected, didn't I? Anyway. I have a very poor... Uh, especially, especially 
when I'm going into these monologues on the stream, I have a very poor working memory of what I had just said. I have a poor memory in general, which has been a great benefit to me because I've learned to blog and to take notes on things. And so my really poor memory has been one of my greatest assets uh, throughout my career. Uh, it's what it be it, 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 knowing that I have a poor memory and using blogging has gotten me clients, has gotten me jobs, uh, and has saved my bacon because I will go and Google something that I forgot that I even ever did and land up on my own blog. Um, so resurrected the group with pizza. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for providing the context for that. Anyway, uh, so this works. So I am going to take a break because I finally got to the point where it booted up and it worked. Um, so I'm going to say, he says, I won't pull up the server of my browser until you give me the kind. No, no, you misunderstood. Check the build server. Uh, also, the dev prefix will be stripped from the build, uh, from the URL name. So the branch dev123, which I just deployed, goes to 123. There we go. Which you can visit now. It sucks that it takes 11 minutes. I, so I essentially, essentially, I spent three days getting a deployment process to take only 11 minutes. Really, I spent four days. Plus, there's another week when, way back when, that I spent on this. Um, when I was moving us from AWS to Digital Ocean, just trying to get the deployment process down to something manageable, because basically nobody knew how to do anything. Somebody had set up AWS and nobody knew how it worked. And so I said, hey, let's just switch to something simpler, because I don't like AWS anyway. Oh. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, a buddy of mine just sent me a funny message. So he's got this theme, the CSS theme, that he's always redoing. And then he gives it a different name even when he's not redoing it. And so it's been, been become a meme where he'll tell me that he's redoing it from scratch. <laughs> Even when he isn't, I think he's done with it now. I don't think he's redoing it anymore. I could be wrong, but I can never tell if he's being serious or if he's actually redoing it and giving it a different name because over the course of a year, I think he redid it three different times and renamed it at least as many times. Okay. Um, what is this server being dedicated to? This one right here? So... This is uh, this is a document uh, collaboration suite. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't really have a name because it doesn't exist outside of our niche. But if you have a startup company, there are events that take place that require documentation from different sources, federal documentation, state documentation, uh, documents with your lawyer, documents with investors, et cetera, et cetera. So anytime you have... Uh, an event, anytime you, you have a, a company that has events that involve multiple parties with documents and contracts from different places, that's what this platform is for. Um, so you, you use it so that you can create data rooms and share with other people. Um, so if I am going to get investment in my company, my investors are going to see my formation docs, they're going to see my hiring docs, they're going to see my, my proprietary information assignment docs, they're going to see all these things, and this platform gives you a way to create and manage those. So if you've already created them, you can manage them here. If you haven't created them, um, then you can create them here. So there are certain accelerators 
that use this product, business accelerators, startup accelerators. So I think Y Combinator, if you're not familiar with what that is, so things similar to Y Combinator will use this so that they can more easily manage the data room as they're bringing their companies through. And uh, data room is a term that's used a lot in law in particular, um, but it's, it's used in the startup space in reference to basically events where lawyers get involved. So anyway, that's what it is. Uh, that all said, so I am in a good spot where I have accomplished something. And so I need to take a break. It has been several hours. Uh, let's see, how many hours has it been? About four, I think. Uh, maybe not quite that many. But anyway, it's been a number of hours. And so it is time for me to take a break and to go for a walk and use the potty and do those things that adults need to do. Uh, one last question. Where are you stationed? Good, sir. So typically stationed is used for military. That's why I was being funny. Uh, I live in Utah and I am stationed <laughs> presently. Let's see if we can, let me, let me, let me flip this over here. There we go. So this is a garage. You can't see it because there's a, there's a screen right here. Let me tilt this up. So there's a screen in front of the garage door. And then there's, there's a light that casts light. This casts lights on my face and this casts light on that thing back there. And then there's a couple of lights. If we, if I could get out of the way, there's a light right, right here. Can we see it? Yeah. Right here. This thing, it gives me that nice purple glow. And then there's another one on the other side. So yeah. So I did, I did say I'm in Utah. You may not have heard me say that, but Utah is not a country. It's a state in the United States, but, uh, yeah. So, oh, and let me, I'm going to go back to this thing here so I can make sure this is set up for the next stream. When I start the next session, whoops. Right about there is normally how I like it. Yeah, there we go. That should be good. And then I'm going to bring this down just a touch. Okay, there we go. That should be back to where I like to have it. I'm actually going to zoom out a little more. I want to get my whole flag in the background there if I can. Let me see if I can. There we go. Pikachu. Oh, now it's all crooked. Dag me, I bet. What happens when you try to get fancy? Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to head out y'all. Thanks for joining in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, and subscribe, uh, share with a friend. Uh, let me know. You can send, Oh, wait, wait, wait. One last thing. One last thing. Uh, I'm going to give you the discord. So if you want to join in on the discord, mostly it's just when I announce what's happening, but sometimes we have a little bit of chit chat. So join in on the discord. Uh, if you want to, if you don't, then get out of here and don't come back. No, uh, you're, you're welcome to come anytime. Um, love, peace, and chicken grease, y'all. Adios. I don't feel like that was the best ending. But, yeah. What, what else am I going to say? Go to the doobly-doo? Click all the things? <laughs> all right. Yeah, you have a good one. I'll catch you later. Adios.